right, we're here. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. For the guests, this is my man Jordan Erickson. He's like a big brother to me growing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since we got together. Yeah, it has actually. How well, you been doing? Good. Good. Just working all the time, taking care of the baby. Oh yeah, there you go. So this tell us how long ago did you have a baby? We had her about eight months ago. She's almost nine months now. Oh wow. Growing up quick, dude. Dude, they grow up fast. They grow up so fast. Like watching her figure things out now, like light bulbs are just turning on so quick. Mm -hmm. She sees something. She's so big on replicating it. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> like, I've kind of noticed that because, like, if I open my mouth, Ezra will, like, open his mouth. Or, like, I could stick my tongue out at him and he'll start to, like, try and copy it a little bit. And, like, I don't know. It's just kind of clicking. And now he's starting to, like look at me a little more and like look at someone else and like kind of get scared <laughs> hundred percent we it's been big for us like we wave to her uh -huh. a lot like if we're leaving or when we see her and now she's starting to get this little wave oh that's freaking before awesome. you know it all three of us are just waving at each other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> but um what's been like the biggest challenge i'd say because she's about nine months now what's been your biggest challenge um honestly this year we both decided like because she's catching on so quick we really want to watch our language that is <laughs> that has been tough yeah i feel that <laughs> <laughs> and like because like i work in construction right now and there there's no filter no. anywhere no one has a filter and it's no. nice but then you come home and i kind of talked about it in the last pod but it's like you almost live two lives because you don't have a filter and everything and you're saying all this wild shit and then you come home and then it's like i need to not say anything like that a hundred percent like i tried to keep it clean at work and i think i made it about three days and i realized no one's taking me serious <laughs> yeah it's okay i gotta i can't have a filter at work but when i get home i've got to clean it up uh-huh because it kind of makes it worse at yeah. work <laughs> yeah i had i had a couple guys that were ripping our duct out at work and I was like, ah, oh, they're just really being some buttheads right now. And it, it wasn't sending the message. <laughs> it doesn't. You need to use that language sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that's what we kind of talked about with Zach is I'm like, how into, like, language and stuff do you want to immerse them at a young age, I guess, so to speak? Because, like, you don't want them being in, like, high school saying, like, oh, don't be a butthead, you know? Yeah. There's actually a trend going around. I don't know if you've seen it where they put their kids, they're probably about five, six. They take them in the bathroom. They're like, in here, you can say anything you want. Uh huh. Only in the bathroom. <laughs> and they've been setting up cameras. And dude, some of these kids are savages. <laughs> this mom walks out and this little kid just gave her the double bird and was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, growing up, my mom kind of slowly let us say a couple swear words here and there uh -huh. and then once they hit high school it was like leash was off uh -huh. it is what it is at this point for real and i that's kind of how it was for me like man my language was foul sometimes <laughs> like, especially when i was playing football if right. i had like a mic if i was mic'd up would not be good no i mean we had those days where we were in the garage working out all of us oh yeah i mean it was kind of hard because we didn't want to get too loud because your mom was inside but <laughs> Some things got thrown around in there. Oh, yeah. And, like, you got to a little bit. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're still all guys, you know. <laughs> but it's hard because, like, like I was kind of talking about, like, you want to be real with your kids. And, like, that's the point of this. That's why I swear in this and everything. It's, like, being a parent's raw, you know. 100%. Like, that's that's why we're parents. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, uh, like there's no easy moments. Like maybe you'll have to tell somebody off in front of your kids cause they're not acting right in front of your kids. And like, there's moments in life where you gotta kind of be that person. And it's like, I don't want to just randomly pop out out of nowhere and be that person and then be like scared of me or something. So it's like, they're like, okay, dad swears a little bit, but not like nothing like super bad, you know? Yeah, but I do think it is important, though, that your kids see that, that you do have a side of you where you could protect them. Yeah. Like, 
they should fear it if they're acting up. Like, <laughs> Dad's got a side. <laughs> he will punish me if I act up. But he, he will send me to my room. Yeah. But they also should know, like, should something happen that you have that side. Uh-huh. Like, they, I've, I've been seeing a lot of those videos where they ask moms, would you kill for your child? Uh-huh. Have you seen that one? I've seen those a lot. So disappointing. Dude, it is. Because when they're like, oh, no, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. It's like, I like I've talked about with Brayden in a couple other episodes. I was like, I would not trust any people like that to watch my kid. <laughs> no, no, 100%. If you're having somebody watch your kid and you know that they would not go to the very end to protect your child, then they shouldn't be around them. No. And it's like, I don't know how you guys are parents and could look at your kids when like, I'm not going to protect you to yeah. my fullest ability. Yeah. I wouldn't kill for you. No, it's like, I would easily die tomorrow if that meant my kid got to live his life. You know, yeah, I've got four dogs and 22 chickens and I would kill for those guys too. <laughs> That's, <hell yeah. laughs> That's like a little farm going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's chaos. I'm running a zoo, <laughs> but anybody awesome. that comes over to the zoo, you take an animal with you when you leave. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, do you eat the eggs? Yeah. Yeah. We, in the summertime we were selling them cause we, I mean, we were getting almost 16 eggs a day. Oh my gosh. We, That's awesome. I slaughtered 10 of them last year and we froze them, been eating fresh chicken. Damn, that's awesome. Is it kind of weird killing a chicken? That you've it's been not like bad. Um, I, <laughs> this is going to be a little gruesome for some people, but I ended up taking a Home Depot bucket and cutting it and kind of squeezing it down into a cone shape and zip tying it. And then I just drop them in that cone cut the head and just let them flop in the cone so they didn't beat their bodies up. Oh, there you go. Because if you cut the head off, I mean, that's where that saying comes from. Like a chicken with its <laughs> head cut off because they fling everywhere. God, I bet. I kind of want to I don't want to <laughs> see it, but it would be like Joe Rogan and pull up some videos of animals fighting. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, we were having a hard time getting everyone to start laying because they were all the same age. They were pretty young. And we got 10 meat chickens, and it's just a crossbreed mm -hmm. between a white rock and a Cornish hen. So they get about 12 pounds in nine weeks, and you can just kill them. Oh, my gosh. And That's quick. I slaughtered those 10 in front of the whole flock. Next thing you know, everybody's laying eggs. Dogs <laughs> had a different attitude. Everyone was so well-behaved. I've seen that, too. Like, there's a TikTok where the pit bull and some dude had like a puppet, a dinosaur puppet, and they like hit the hell of the dinosaur puppet and the dog's like, I ain't grabbing that ball. Yep. <laughs> They're definitely watching. They're definitely responsive. <laughs> I think kids are that way too. Yeah. I did see one where this dad was trying to feed his kid. He wasn't eating from the spoon and he took a little stuffed animal and like started beating the hell out of it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the kid's just eating. The kid's like, yep, I'm doing yeah. it. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't condone hitting your, your kid like he hit that animal, but yeah <laughs> for real <laughs> but what kind of work are you into just for like my job yeah um so i do service for commercial hvac um kind of helping with some installs on top of service calls but a little side work here and there there you go do you like it i like it i like the i like the service call aspect a lot i've i was kind of talking to my wife about this that I care more for the machine than I do the people. So when they tell me like I'm cold, it's like, yeah, your heat's not working. I it's because you're abusing this machine. You uh -huh. haven't changed your filter. Mm -hmm. Like I baby these machines and I kind of stick it to the the people. Like these have filters and you take care of them. Yeah. And it's super simple. It takes like five minutes to replace a filter. And you'd that. be amazed how many people don't know there's filters. Really? On your furnace. I didn't know that when I first moved into a house, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that don't know. And because, like, I came from, like, an apartment and, like, a townhome, and we had, like, people that came and took care of the property, and they came and did it every six months. Yeah. I, I didn't know what they are doing. I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but I moved into a house, and, like, you find out, you're like, oh, I got to change this filter. Yeah, absolutely. Because it was, like, summertime, and I didn't change the filter, and it stopped working because it was too blocked up. So we had to, like, change the filter and... Then it started working. But. Yeah, that's usually the first thing you want to check. If somebody's not getting AC or heat, sometimes that filter gets plugged up. Yeah, and that's what I didn't know. And, like, any of the parents out there that are just getting into a house, like, there's a lot of work to it. A hundred percent. We bought our house, and, frick, I, I put a new furnace in it before we closed because 
I bought my grandma's house, so my cousins were living there. Uh -huh. Furnace went out before we closed. I was like, I'll put a new one in there because it's just going to benefit us. Yeah. So we put that in, and then that first year we lived there, it it rained a ton. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, like three years back, we got a ton of rain. That out was here. a lot, yeah. And our backyard was just flooding up the walls of the house. We didn't have a drain, so oh my God. had to install a French drain in the backyard. And then we got that taken care of. The year following that, our main sewer line in our front yard closed. <laughs> Started backing up the sewage in the house. So, <laughs> dude, owning a home is expensive. You learn a lot. You end up doing a lot of DIYs, but it's worth it. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of DIYs because I don't got the money to pay anybody. 100%. YouTube University. YouTube University. It helps a lot of people. <laughs> 100%. And like any of the dads out there, I feel like doing something yourself like i don't know it's rewarding i guess so to say oh for sure i mean i i redid the uh drain because i noticed when our whole sewage thing was going on that <clears throat> that wasn't we had a leak in the drain coming from the tub so i'm in the crawl space I'm like i might as well just redo all the drain pipes in uh -huh. the house because i had to pay somebody to do the front yard i don't have the equipment to mm -hmm. dig up the front yard the street needed permits so He's handling that. I'm handling the pipes inside the house. And even still to this day, like after we give our daughter a bath, I lift the drain to the tub. I'm like, look at that drain. And you're like, oh, yeah, I put that there. <laughs> fix this. This thing's an animal. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like, because it gives you a peace of mind. You're like, I know everything's good. It's done right. Yeah. Like, it's all redone. It shouldn't fail while I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Everything's been over glued, over tightened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. That's how it always is. But like, cause like I'm redoing the flooring in my house right now. Yeah. I see the, that. Uh huh. And the upstairs part. And it's like, cause our, we have a cat and it's getting old and it likes to pee different places when it gets all pissed off. <laughs> and so, um, I think Ezra's going to start crawling here anytime soon. So I was like, I'm going to replace this carpet or I'm going to get rid of this cat. <laughs> and one or the other. One or the other is going to happen. So we're starting with the floor, and it should work, but we'll see. Cats on borrowed time. Yeah, cats on borrowed time for sure. <laughs> Came home one day, and I smelled it. I was like, I'm going to fucking throw this cat outside, and he's going to live in the backyard. <laughs> I don't know. With animals and stuff, like, I'm super protective of Ezra and stuff. I'm like, I swear to God, if you try and scratch my baby, you're gone. <laughs> Dude, it, it's so weird. I, I tell people all the time with our dogs, like, before we had our daughter, it was like, I, I'd do anything to protect these dogs. <laughs> Number one priority. Now that my daughter's here, when she's laying on the ground playing, and the dog comes up, like, walking too close to her, I'm like, if you nip her <laughs> or step on her, I'm throwing hands. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to throw you through this wall. <laughs> yeah. You are no longer number one. You've been demoted. <laughs> You've been demoted. <laughs> It's like, cause like they're your like little babies in a way yeah. for the relationship until you have a baby. And then it's like, now you're just an animal. Yeah. I and don't, don't you hurt the real baby. Don't you hurt the real baby. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> but I don't know, man. That stuff's fun. Yeah. Did I tell you what happened on uh, my way to work Friday? No. So I'm driving. It's, it was kind of foggy as I'm heading in. I'm in uh, South Salt Lake area mm -hmm. and I see this box like right in the middle of the road and I hurry and swerve around a big, big freaking box. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I swerve, I pulled over. I'm like, I'm just going to kick it out of the road. I don't mm -hmm. want somebody to hit that. So I kick it over and I hear something kind of rattling in it. 5 a.m. I decide to open this box in South Salt Lake. <laughs> That's a Mistake bad number one. That's Mistake a bad idea. Number one. <laughs> so I open this box and I see, you know, those like insulated bags people keep like cold food in for picnics uh -huh. it was zipped closed we got to keep digging got to see what's in this <laughs> no. bag i open it up i shine my flashlight on my phone in there it's got dry ice in the bag <laughs> and there's a jar <laughs> so <laughs> we would be like a finger <laughs> we scooby-doo our way deeper into the bag <laughs> i lift it up there is just a single human toe in this glass jar 
<laughs> it was in a dry ice. <laughs> that is insane. And <laughs> dude, I don't know what to do for that. I mean, you're in South Salt Lake, you find a human body part. Do you call the cops? Do I call my wife? Do I call my boss? Like a little bit of both. A little all three, I think. Yeah, and I I couldn't think of what to do, so I just ended up calling the tow truck. <laughs> you called the tow truck? Oh, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really find one? No. Oh, you had me, bro. Yeah, you just always gotta have dad jokes. Dude, I love it. <laughs> Dude, that's one thing you I start to get some dad jokes and Drew does not want to hear them. No, I got a calendar for Christmas. Every day there's a dad joke. I've seen that. And I tell Maddie every day the dad joke of the day and she is so over it at this point. <laughs> but I spend five, ten minutes laughing. I go to work. I tell everybody about the joke. Dude, that's what I do. I see some stupid joke online. I'm like, I got to tell everybody I know. Yep. <laughs> but dude, you're full on dad mode right now. Yeah, yeah, I call these my hoochie daddy shorts. Some hoochie daddy shorts. Yeah. Got a some, got the new balances. Dude, there you go. Yeah, They're right. all dirty. Looks like you mowed the lawn a little bit. Yeah, mowed the lawn, cleaned the chicken coop. There you go. Full on dad mode. Yeah, they've they've been through their rite of passage. Dude, that's what you got to do. I still got to <laughs> get me a pair of new balances. Honestly, so I growing up, I was a big Nike guy. Mm -hmm. Nike was what I wore all the time. Nothing compares to these new balances. Really? These dads had it figured out. <laughs> They've had it figured out since day one. Yeah. And I, I tell Maddie, these hoochie daddy shorts give me next level confidence. Oh, yeah. Got a little of that dill fighty going on. Yeah. You walk into <laughs> Home Depot, people are asking you, hey, what do I do with this project? You've got the jorts, new balances. <laughs> You're looking at the lawn care products and they're like, hey, uh, you want to come give me some advice on mine? <laughs> Absolutely, dude. People just believe anything you say when you dress like a dad. Dude, I've noticed that too. If you have a little bit of confidence and act like you know what you're talking about, someone will listen. A hundred percent. I started doing that. I was like a salesperson at a work or at one of my jobs. And these people would ask me all these wild questions. And at first I'd be like, uh, I don't know. Let me call like my manager or something. I was like, ah, I'm just going to try to just talk some bullshit real quick. I'd throw out some random ass bullshit and they're like, oh, okay, thank you. I'm like, man, in this world, you could say anything and someone will like, listen. Dude, sales is hard. It is. Sales is hard. When we lived out in Vegas, I worked at CarMax selling oh. cars. <laughs> and <clears throat> I mean, people would come in looking for a Honda Civic, you know, Hyundai, and I'd have them leaving in an F-150. There you go. I, I sold the most trucks at that dealership <laughs> in Henderson, Nevada. That is awesome. And it, people would be like, how'd you get them in a truck? And it's like, well, you know, at the EcoBoost, it's getting really good gas mileage, but now they got space. Yeah. A lot more space than a Honda Civic. Yep. And then you got the bed. That's one thing I found out. Once you have a house, we'll come back to the CarMax, but once you have a house, you need a freaking truck, dude. Absolutely. You need for all the projects, all your dad projects and stuff truck and a trailer truck and a trailer and you go to home depot about seven times a week and it's the new place to spend all your money i heard a rumor that if you go to home depot you're working on a project if you're there three times in a day they give you an apron <laughs> they should have gave an apron to me there's one we moved into this house and i was tr it was the stupidest shit that hangs me up too i was trying to hook up the washer and dryer and um and fix a toilet. And I'm there. I get the wrong thing. I go back. Try and hook it up. This was the wrong thing. I go back. And it was, it was, I was there like four times in the day, four or five times. Yep. And then I was there the next week buying a microwave and all kinds of shit. Usually every home project I have, I'm at Home Depot at least twice. Oh yeah. I'm there the first time like, okay, this is everything I'm going to need. Uh huh. And you're one part short. Oh yeah. And then you go back and then you get it and you're like, yeah, this should fit. Cause you don't take measurements. Cause who needs to take a measurement? Yeah. By the second trip there, you're so confident, you know what you need. And then you go back and it's half an inch off or a quarter inch off and you got to go back. Yep. But I did that with my sprinkler system. Oh, but sprinklers are a pain. Yeah. Home projects. But anyway, back to your CarMax. I bet you can make a podcast on that. Oh, God, dude. I saw so much wild shit working at a CarMax in Vegas. You, I mean, they call themselves adult entertainers. Uh-huh. When you're, when you're filling out, like, customer paperwork. <laughs> adult entertainer. And they say, I'm an adult entertainer. And it's like, okay. 
whatever you want to call it. So you put that in, but dude, these women will come in, just drop cash every purchase. I mean, I watched one lady, <clears throat> she came in with, I'd assume was her boyfriend, maybe handler, bouncer, pimp. I don't know. <laughs> one of the, <laughs> one of the many options. <laughs> yeah. So they come in, she didn't even test drive. She saw this Porsche 911, saw that on the lot. She's like, I want that car. I was like, okay, you want to test drive it? We got to run. On cars like that, we had to run a credit check, make sure they could even get approved before we let them take it. Uh -huh. She goes, no, I'm just going to buy it. I was like, okay, we can go in and start the paperwork. So I start filling it out, and I asked her, like, you know, are you wanting to take a loan on this? You got a down payment? She said, I'm going to pay cash. <laughs> oh, shit. So she had her handler, bouncer, pimp go get a bag, came back into the store, and there was a hundred thousand dollars cash in that bag <laughs> holy shit and she bought it and at carmax we put these big ridiculous bows on the car big yellow bows uh-huh and you take a picture of the customer with their car and she I, said throw the bow in too yeah i put the bow on the car and i'm like it was all cleaned ready to go for her. and i was like would you like a picture with your car and she goes yeah so i'm like just stand next to it and i took her phone ready to take a picture and she goes to the hood of this Porsche, crawls up it, kind of like a cat would crawl up a car, <laughs> and swipes that bow off the hood, <laughs> turns around, and she was in a dress, skirt type option, uh -huh. spreads her legs and pushes the skirt down and says, take the picture. <laughs> Dude, the things I saw at CarMax. <laughs> You're just sitting there like... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. There it is. Enjoy your purchase. <laughs> Enjoy your Porsche. <laughs> See, I wish I had that kind of money and that yeah. kind of confidence. <laughs> yeah, me too, dude. I mean, if I could pay a hundred thousand in cash for a car, I'd spread my legs on the hood too. I would too. I'd be like, this is my car. <laughs> this is my building actually. <laughs> yeah. Wild. I wish I just had that confidence. I'd have to be drunk as hell to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean... Adult entertainers, they got next level confidence. That's true. I need that confidence. I know. I keep talking about trying to tell my wife, like, let me start an OF. <laughs> let me start an OF. Yeah, these people are making stupid amounts of money. <laughs> I was like, I won't get naked. Like, I'll just wear underwear and my American flag Crocs and I'll just barbecue. <laughs> Dude, I bet you could. <laughs> Somebody's got to be into it. <laughs> Somebody's got to. People are into feet. Somebody's got to be yeah. into that. <laughs> I mean, my feet aren't anything to share, but. The barbecuing. What would you call it? I don't know. I'd have to think about it for a little bit. And then, you know, people are selling under. I'll sell the underwear in the video. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> Dude, first, if you need some Christmas money, you know. Yeah. You <laughs> call America in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> Go out there just <laughs> barbecuing in like 20 degree weather. Yeah. and I'll, I'll be right on that Blackstone Benny Hanna style. There you go, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> I bet someone would be into it. Yeah. There's all kinds of shit out there. I could just get like two subscribers. <laughs> and make your day. <laughs> it at least, that'd give me the confidence to crawl in the hood of my car. One might be your wife and one might be some dude from Japan. <laughs> Good enough for me. He's like American. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'm funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's wild, dude, how much money these people are making. Dude, I see that, and then I go to work, and I'm not making, like, a ton of money. I'm, like, I'm busting my ass, like, nine hours a day in this cold. I'm, like, I'm going to go home and take some pictures of my feet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I I Buy was some actually oil from Walmart real quick. <laughs> it was snowing last week, and I was up on the roof working, and I was listening to a podcast. can't remember who it was, but they were talking about a girl who was making beer from the yeast in her vagina. <laughs> and this girl's oh. making a killing. And it's like, I'm up here freezing. It's snowing sideways. And this girl's just making beer from her vagina. <laughs> I've heard that too. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know who would want to buy that. I don't know, dude. People were buying that one chick's bath water. I know. For a lot of money. She's like making millions of dollars off of it too. Yeah, for taking a bath. Dude, you know what's weird is like people also buy like breast milk. Like yeah. Other people's breast milk. Bodybuilders are big into that. I know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. I I think we were in high school and we were talking about it. 
There was a whole, <laughs> we watched Pain and Gain, I think. <laughs> yeah, there was a whole ass website, and you can like pick the nationality of the mother, and it says like how much she was producing. It's crazy. It's weird that there's <laughs> sites like this out there. <laughs> oh yeah, I think we found that in the, your garage, because we used to hang out in your garage and just there was a porch swing in your garage, and we would just hang out there all night. Oh yeah, I mean, my Mustang was in there, so we'd work on the Mustang, sit on the swing, and then the stupid shit that we would talk about all night oh yeah well i almost made some po- some uh some websites and all kinds of ideas get brought up yeah if you want to like make a business idea that's all you got to do is sit in a garage with some buddies yep i don't know i think we had some winners in there but yeah we also had a lot of losers oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah a lot of things that get us locked up <laughs> yeah probably uh we didn't take a lot of pictures either because usually we weren't doing stuff you wanted to be taking pictures of. Yeah. I mean, now as a dad and, you know, how big social media is, I'm glad there were no photos taken. There's a lot of things that could haunt us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, bud. I'd like, I'm still scared some stuff might haunt us, but, you know. Yeah. We'll I'm cross just that hoping, bridge when we get there. Yeah. I'm hoping people see us for who we are today what i'm saying like i feel like i've grown a lot like if you knew me in high school i feel like i'm a totally different person same and like same with you like because like we haven't hung out a lot outside too much like we've gotten together here and there but like i haven't seen you in forever dude yeah and now i see you with like a little baby and like full dad mode and everything it's it's cool dude i mean if i'm not at work i'm at home playing with my daughter i mean I hear you guys talking in the podcast about like the gym and I don't, I don't do anything. I I go home. My hobby's just playing with her. Mm -hmm. I figure once she's a little older, she's got friends. She's going to be at friend's house. Then I've got more free time, but this is going so quick. I was looking at pictures the other day of how small she was compared to now. And Mm -hmm. it's like, dude, I don't want to miss a second of this. Dude, that's how I am. And it's because we were talking at, talking about it when you were coming in here but like they grow so fast within a week their minds grow within a week like one week they're not playing with certain toys the next week they're able to like grab this toy and like play with it eat it like you know like it's kind of crazy and uh like i was telling you this but he like wasn't sitting up and like we're just starting to sit him up and he'd like fall over and then the next week he was sitting up kind of by himself and support himself. And every now and then he might fall over, but not a lot. Like it's kind of crazy. It happens so quick. Like if you go through your photos of when he was born and then just slowly scroll uh-huh. and watch how quick he's changing and how like all the new stuff he's doing. Dude, there's sometimes I look and it's a tearjerker. You get digging too deep and it's like, I got to stop. Dude, especially if you're at work and like you start looking, you're like, oh my God, like, I don't want to be here. I want to yeah. go be with them. And like, I'll be a stay at home dad. <laughs> like a hundred percent. You get looking through there and it's like, I don't need this job that bad. I don't need it that bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll sell pictures on my feet for yeah. an hour a day and then I get to hang out with my family. Yep. During her nap time, I'll go barbecue in my underwear, yeah. pay the bills. and <laughs> Pay the bills. <laughs> Be back to being a dad. That he's shaking his money maker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how quick they grow up. Call it Dilfrost. Dilfrost. <laughs> Just check OnlyFans in a week. You might have it up. Yeah. It, it, if this blows up, yeah, we'll start something. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Put this on TikTok. All of a sudden, you have a new TikTok series going on with a link to your page. <laughs> but you Click never know. the link. Click the link in the bio, <laughs> but like, yeah, it's crazy how fast they grow up. Cause Drew takes pictures of him every day, and I'm so grateful for it because my dumbass doesn't think to do it. And like, it's literally like a timeline, and you could scroll through them. And I was looking at like when he was first born, when we were giving him his first bath, and I was like, oh my gosh, dude! Like, I barely remember this. <laughs> Like, I don't barely remember it. It feels like it was yesterday, but, like, it's, you know, like, it's hard to remember him that little. Oh, yeah, and there's some days, like, we had one, I want to say about two weeks ago. Um, She got up in the morning, you know, I got her changed, got her out, put her in her high chair, getting ready to feed her breakfast. 
And while I'm getting everything ready, I looked at her and it's like, she looks more like a toddler today, Mm -hmm. not a baby, like just overnight. Dude, it's wild. I put my baby to bed and I got my toddler out of bed in the morning. (sighs) Don't even (laughs) say that. Like, oh my gosh. It's crazy. I know. I was telling Drew, he was getting bigger and I was looking at those pictures. I was like, you ready for another one? (laughs) Ready to go through this process one more time. (laughs) How many are you guys going for? Um, we're not for sure yet. We for sure want more. I think for sure we want another little girl, but, or not another, we want a little girl, but yeah. we'll see. What about you guys? Two and then we're done. Two and you're done? Yeah. There you go. Well, like, it's crazy. Cause like, I remember when you guys first got married, I was, I was joking with you. Cause I was still like, just getting out of high school. I was like, Oh, when you have no baby and you're like, oh, I don't know. Like we don't, we're not thinking about that right now. We don't want a baby. And here you are. It's fucking yeah. I mean, I, we waited for four, four years mm-hmm. before we had, I think that's smart. And like, I think you could have a baby whenever and like, it makes you grow up. But like, I know if I had a baby, you know, when I was younger, I wouldn't be as good of a dad. I feel like than, than I am now. Well, and it was kind of nice because it gave me and my wife four years to enjoy each other. Uh-huh. And it was a big thing for me. I wanted to make sure like we were solid. We could, we've had plenty of highs and lows Mm -hmm. before we committed to bringing a life Mm -hmm. into this world. Yeah. And I feel like that's a big thing, you know, cause like their life is so precious and you want to, as a dad, it's, it's hard cause you want to give them the world. And like, dude, sometimes like you have like tears of frustration. It's like, I can't give them everything. Like I know I should be able to, Yeah, you know, you have those, some, like some of those nights, but you know, I don't know. There's a, there's a coworker that gave me some amazing dad advice. Let's I think this it. is fitting for the podcast. Let's hear it. So <clears throat> he was saying when you have a bad day at work or you had a shitty drive home, you're pissed off and you get home, find something like for me personally, I, I do this every day now. When I get home, I have a coyote skull sitting by the side of my house. Mm-hmm. And I touch that coyote skull and all the shit that happened at work, everything I'm pissed off about stays with that coyote before I walk through the door. Oh, that's cool. Now when I go into my house, I'm focused on my family. Whatever happened for the day at work, it's out there with the coyote. It's his shit to deal with. Mm-hmm. And then in the morning, slap that fucker on the head and, Take it with me. Yeah, Going come back on. To work. <laughs> We're gonna go knock some skulls today. Yep. <laughs> All that shit, it's back. Yep. <laughs> Dude, and that's what I like. That's great advice. I'm, I kind of try and do that same thing because I heard um, a mom's TikTok that my wife sends me all the time that like babies like pick up on your energy and like if you come with negative energy, they'll have that negative energy towards you or like feel that from you. So you give that off and like, I don't know. I feel like it's not good for a baby. A hundred percent. Like if you come with good positive energy that makes them happy and like helps them develop and I don't know. That's how I always want to be. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, even when we got our first puppy, um, they gave us this little lamb and it had a little heart in there that you would turn on. It had a slow heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And it's because as puppies, they cuddle up next to the mom. They feel that slow heartbeat. It gives them comfort. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same for kids. When you're holding your baby on your chest, if you've got a heightened heart rate, Mm -hmm. they're going to be like, hey, what's going on? Why why are they worried? Should I be worried? Yeah. But if you can come home and you've got a calm heart, calm demeanor, that baby's like, hey, we're good. That's what what I've heard is like, it's important for you just to take a deep breath, a little ASMR. And uh, you guys like that? <laughs> you like that? Huh? <laughs> and uh, like, let them just hear your heartbeat and you be calm and they'll kind of like relax and take your whole like your vibe. It sounds cringy, but you know, like, you know what I'm saying? No, 100%. And so, like, leaving all that at work, I've kind of been doing that, but I've never thought of it that way. It's like, that's why I'm like, I live like two lives. Like, You know, like I could say whatever I want at work. And then when I come home, it's okay. I rain it all in. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, like I said, I touched that coyote skull, everything that went wrong that day at work. It's not my family's problem. They don't deserve me to take it out on them. Mm -hmm. I leave it with that coyote and 
All right, we're back. Had some fucking computer issues, but... Yeah, we got it figured out. Stupid MacBook. <laughs> I love it, but hate it at the same time. But So, uh, so I just throw some nicotine in. What, what are you chewing on? Uh, just those on pouches. Uh, a little cheaper than Zen, because Maverick does some deals where you can buy multiple cans. There you go. Free. But, yeah, I went to that, quit chewing a little over a year ago. I was doing Ooh. about three cans of Copenhagen a day. Copenhagen long cut? Yeah. There you go. It was getting pretty bad. I bet. What What kind of caused you to stop chewing? Why did um, you want to quit? I tried a couple times. Like, I definitely kind of went in and out. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Uh-huh. I'd go cold turkey for a little bit, and then I'd crack, give in. But finally it was, I don't want my daughter to see me doing this. Mm-hmm. Especially the amount I was doing, plus... My wife was chewing me out about spit bottles around the house. <laughs> Those are so fucking nasty, bro. Yeah, they are gross. <laughs> I mean, even as the guy chewing, they are pretty nasty. Uh huh. So I was like, I just don't want her seeing me do this. I, I also had a lot of gum damage happening. Really? So it was like I got to. Once she was born, that was kind of the final motivation I needed to be like, okay, I'll okay. go to these nicotine pouches. Still got a goal to keep working the levels down yeah what are you what kind of levels do you have right now i'm on eight milligram right now holy shit you're still a wild man <laughs> yeah some some days you know i've got two eight milligrams in at once those stressful days yeah but i've still got a goal to work it down <laughs> there you go going from three full cans a day of copenhagen to this is I feel like it's a big improvement that's a huge improvement have you noticed your mouth health like get better yeah my gums stopped deteriorating i still need to go in they got to do a gum graph Mm -hmm. they got to take some skin off the roof and stitch it down there but i'm missing a lot of gum at the bottom dude at least you stopped when you did though yeah you know so that way your daughter doesn't see it when you're you know 45 or something getting surgery and yeah well my wife's like i don't mind the the nicotine pouches you're not spitting there's not bottles of spit everywhere Uh uh-huh and it's like okay this is a win she's happy i'm happy i'm improving I don't know how you're not spitting. I put one of those in one time, and it was like... Oh, dude, I was gutting straight Copenhagen. Oh, that's true. That's I'd only true. spit twice after a fresh... I'd call them horseshoes. Uh-huh. And the whole bottom jaw. <laughs> you're wild, spit bro. Spit twice and then just gut the rest. You're wild. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Oh, I miss it. The things we do for our kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, there's days where it's like, God, what I would do for a can of Copenhagen <laughs> right now. Yeah. But then at the end of the day when you're like, I made it through that without it. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. I think if you look at that, like you can make it through anything if you just like keep going. Yeah. Well, you and it, it was wild to see how my body reacted when I quit. Uh huh. Like the brain fog that I had was intense. Really? Yeah. Cause I'd wake up and it's like, God, I can't focus. I'd throw a chew in. I was alert. I was there. But then when I quit, like I'd go, I went weeks with brain fog. I was shaking. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That sounds like hell. The withdrawals. That sounds like hell. Yeah. It was like, clearly I need to get off of this. Yeah. Dude, that's how I am with caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have too much caffeine in a day. <laughs> like, uh, I wake up in the morning, go to the gym. I have my pre-workout, which is a huge, I have a high stem Kickstarter, you know? So it's a lot of caffeine. And then from from the gym, I usually grab like a Red Bull and go to work. And so on Friday, I uh, didn't go to the gym because Ezra was up all night. So I took him so Drew could sleep a little bit before I had to go to work. And I feel like that's something you have to do every now and then, you know. Dad move. Dad move, right. And uh, I waited as long as I could. And so I didn't get to get my Red Bull and I was at work. And we didn't take a lunch that day because we were trying to just get through with the day and go home because it was Friday. Bro, I had the craziest headache and like yeah. I had a Dr. Pepper. I didn't do anything <laughs> like craziest. Like it felt like brain fog, dude. Yeah. I feel like caffeine's a real, real addiction. Yeah. I try not to do too much caffeine. Like during the week, I'll just have my cup of coffee, uh-huh. take it to work with me. And that's about as wild as it gets today kind of feeling a little slow i was like i'm gonna grab an energy drink get yeah. hyped for the podcast dude you need it especially for something like this <laughs> you need to get your brain going yeah what kind of uh pre-workout do you use so i use mother bucker mother by bucker. bucked up 
Dude, that bucked up. Dude. So <laughs> when I was drinking energy drinks, I tried their bucked up. Um, I went to Harmon's and they had buy one, get one free. And it was, I don't remember the flavor. It's like the red, white, and blue. Uh-huh. Like, like the American. The cans. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I've never had this. I'll try it. I drank one on my way to the car after I bought it. <laughs> Threw that in the garbage can in the parking lot. Opened another one. I'm driving home, dude. My skin was crawling. <laughs> and this guy cut me off. <laughs> and I had a visual of pitting him into the field and beating his ass. And I was like, I can't drink this. <laughs> You're like, I got to throw this out the window. Yeah, whatever's in this, like, I just wanted to fight. <laughs> and like to have that mother bucker it's a high stim it's like up a level yeah no dude i'd take a i don't know how people take two scoops i take one scoop i usually take like three quarters of a scoop to be honest with you and um i don't know why it's doing it again i usually take um like half a scoop and i took a full scoop i was sitting there on my bench and like start sweating from the workout and i could feel my sweat coming down and then like that touching my skin started to make it itch and then i'd like wipe it off and then that would make it itch even more i'm like i feel like a crackhead right now like i've never done crack but i feel like this is what crack feels like i'm all jittery like ready to punch a hole through a wall yeah i'll never drink that bucked up again whatever's in there it it had me raging did it yeah like I could do a monster rock star, I'm fine. Whatever's in that bucked up, it did not sit with me right. I was ready to fight someone. You're like, I'm ready to crack some heads. I'm yeah. ready to <laughs> Hold on one sec. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Sorry, some audio issues I've never really had happen to me, but whatever. But um as we were taking a break, little babies throwing a little baby tantrum tantrum. Tantra tantrum. Temper tantrum. Man, those are hard sometimes. And like right now, he's four months old, almost five months. And I've never really heard anybody talk about this, but going through sleep regression right now and he's not wanting to sleep and he's just constantly crying and I, he's teething right now. It's tough. Yeah. it It's so fun though because <clears throat> you know they're going through a sleep regression. They're learning something new. And then when they finally get back on their sleep pattern and you see what new thing they learn, uh huh, it's kind of cool. Like, and he's starting to self soothe with that, like learning how to self soothe and stuff. And I could see him starting to do that. So that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know if you guys, how quick you got him like in his own room in the crib. Uh huh. We, we did the bassinet in our room for, I want to say, good three four weeks and then after that there was one night she fell asleep on the couch with us Mm -hmm. my wife's like just put her in her crib see what happens and set her down in there ever since then that's what we've done she sleeps in her crib and she's still i think around five months well at two months she started sleeping through the whole night oh my gosh and then at five months if her binky fell out and it woke her up she would grab her binky put it back in Oh my sleep. gosh. You have a self-sufficient <laughs> little baby right yeah. there. <laughs> so now, I mean, she'll take her binky out. She'll talk to you for a minute or she'll, you know, make a couple noises at night and then pop it back in, go back to sleep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. We need to learn that. That sounds nice. Yeah. It, it kind of has me worried because our first one has been fairly easy. <laughs> <laughs> little sleep regression here and there, but nothing too bad teething she has like i was telling drew this one day you know she gets upset she's pretty angry Mm -hmm. next day she's fine Mm -hmm. like teething hasn't been horrible come baby number two hope we're that lucky (laughs) good luck on that one (laughs) yeah (laughs) this is how they get you to have more i know i've heard that like if your first baby is really easy your next one will be hard or if you have a really hard one your next one will be easy god I know. I, I told my wife, like, do we quit while we're ahead? <laughs> Is this it? Is Cheat this the system? <laughs> For real. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. We definitely want one more. Um, but we, we talked about, like, age gaps. Uh-huh. And I think I told her, like, if our daughter now is five and we still haven't found the right time to have a second. That's it. Yeah. That's too big of a gap. You've got to start completely over. Mm -hmm. I mean, at five, 
you're not packing that much stuff to go out and about. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, you, you've made it through the baby stage. Uh huh. I'm not starting over. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I want to see how that is because me and my wife have been talking about the same thing, like the baby gap and like how soon we want to have our next one or when do we want to start trying again? And like, obviously not for a minute, <laughs> but um, we're like, is like one year good? Is a two year gap good? Or like, we we keep talking two years. I think two year gap is a pretty decent gap. That way they're still close enough. Like what's you and Miguel's gap? We're like 16 months. We're like, I think they're called like Irish twins or whatever. So it, there wasn't much of a gap there. Damn, Willie. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, me and my brother, we had two, almost three years. And mm -hmm. I felt like that was perfect. We were far enough apart that we had our own friends, mm -hmm. but we were still close enough in age that if I wanted to hang with him and his buddies, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like a weird older kid coming to hang out with young kids. Yeah, for real. <laughs> like, like I said, I felt like you were one of my older brothers growing up. Yeah. And like was, through high school. I think that's the perfect window. Yeah. Cause you were like the first dude to get a car in our little friend group. And dude, we packed bodies in that car, <laughs> that little Alero <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> turned up the stereo, rolled down the windows. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good time, but we packed people in that car. Uh huh. <laughs> Probably not to a safe extent, but, no, you know. No. <laughs> it was fun. And, like, I want my son to have moments like that when he grows up. And I'm worried about how this, like, generation and how the world's going nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> these I don't even understand what some of these kids are into anymore. I don't either. Like, I, I told my wife, like, it's important that we see on TikTok, like, what these kids are doing. So we kind of have an idea. Uh-huh. But it's like, I'm lost already. I know. And it's scary because, like, I want him to go to public schools. But then it's like, do I want to send him to a private school? But then is it going to be even weirder? Or, like, weirder if we go to send him to a private school? I'm reading a book. Uh, I don't know if you know who Jordan Peterson is. Yeah, I do. Oh, I'm yeah. reading his book, The 12 Rules of Life. And there's a chapter in there talking about parenting. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that chapter was titled don't let your kids do something that makes you hate them. And it was like, Oh Jesus, oh, sure. you know, I don't think we hate our kids. Yeah. But he kind of elaborated on it and he was talking how some parents struggle to get their kids to go to bed. It's like an hour long process. You know, you're wrestling a toddler yeah. trying to get him to go down. Well, when you look at that time, an hour every night for a whole year really adds up. And That's a lot of time. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you start to resent your child for it uh -huh. because that cuts into, you know, time with you and your wife or some personal time before bed. And, um, he was like, you need to get control of those things before that resentment builds up. Mm -hmm. And he said one thing that really stuck with me. He said, you in theory have only four years to model your child after that all their growth and development primarily comes from their peers. Oh, wow. Because you're sending them to school, preschool. Mm -hmm. So you need to get your kid to be able to share, be polite, be a nice human being. Because if they're not, then kids don't want to hang out with them. Mm -hmm. And now they fall behind because they're not growing from communicating with peers and having experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, I thought I had like 18 years to make a perfect human <laughs> being and send them out. But For real. No, he's saying you have four years and all their growth primarily comes from their friends. Dude, I heard that's that's smart. Like, I need a, I don't know. I've never thought of that. Like, because I've never thought, like, I'm going to hate my kid. But. Yeah. And, it, you know, hate's a strong word to use, but the resentment for sure. Like, when you start adding up an hour of every day. And you're like, bro, just go to bed. You know, 365 hours mm -hmm. in a year that you have spent trying to get your kid to go to bed. Yeah, that's a lot of hours. I think I've spent that much time on, like, GTA 5 back in the day. <laughs> but I'm just, it's just, that's a joke, but, like, that's crazy. And, like, only four years. I never, like, I thought, I heard a quote that said, like, you have 10 years to be your child's, like, who they look up to. And, like, you're going to be the most important person to your child for that first 10 years. Then after that, they have relationships and kids and like friends that are more important or like 
take yeah. more of a bigger role in their life. You, you kind of take the back seat at that point. Yeah. <laughs> and like, don't, that one was kind of saying like, don't mess up. Like, you know, like, especially we're focused on careers and trying to get money and like getting a good spot. So we're like already away from what's going on. So like, don't be more away, I guess, like being your kid's life. Yeah. But I didn't think of the first four years. That's a hundred percent. I, I've told my wife this, that as my daughter gets older, one to two times a month, I'm going to take her out on a date mm -hmm. because I want her to see how a guy should treat her open the car door, open the door to the restaurant, pull her chair out for her. Mm -hmm. And that way when she does reach an age where she starts to date, she, you know, if she walks out to the front yard and they're heading out somewhere and he doesn't get the car door for her, I'd expect her to turn around and come back in the house. Yeah. If he's not going to treat her like a gentleman. Yeah, for real. He doesn't deserve her time. Yeah. And that, I think that's something that's getting lost. Yeah. You know, that's something I used to do or try to do. But then at the same time, I'm like, if I ever have a daughter, I'd be like, don't date someone like I was, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I feel like that's the scariest part about being a dad, like a girl dad. It's like, I know how I was in high school. Yeah. And if she comes across any guys like that, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, you have all that time to kind of teach her what she should be looking for. But I mean, you've always got shithead kids. Oh yeah. And I, I'm like you said, we know how we thought at that time. Oh yeah. There's one thing on our mind and it's not getting a car door. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's, it's very important that I really want to stress that to her. Like if he does not treat you like a gentleman should treat you, then mm -hmm. he doesn't deserve your time. Yeah. I think that's something that is super important to teach like your daughter. And that's something that's important to teach my son is like, you need to be a gentleman. You need to get the car door. Growing up, I want you to be like the nicest, sweetest, like little boy ever and like share and like be kind. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like that's super important. Something that's getting lost. In yeah. This generation. For sure. Like if a kid comes over to meet me and take our daughter out on a date, if he can't look me in the eyes and shake my hand. You know, we're going to have an issue. Oh, yeah. I feel like looking someone in the eyes is a lost thing. Like yeah. I'll look people in the eyes and I try and make it a priority and then they'll get like freaked out and like look all around. And yeah, I mean, I don't want to be that dad that like I open the door and there's a shotgun. It's like, <laughs> all right, dude, this is the rule because you can't lock your daughter in a cage. Yeah. She, you know, she's got to go out on date. She's got to experience that. And it, when we first had our daughter, that was kind of my attitude. I wanted to be the guy with the gun at the front door. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, don't be like that. Mm -hmm. She's like in high school, I went on dates. I had fun. It was nice. But her dad, kind of was a little more relaxed about it you know just mm -hmm. meet the guy see what his intentions are so like, okay mm -hmm. she kind of had to talk me down because yeah i'd like to open the door with a gun <laughs> and be like hey <laughs> hey motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i've thought about that a lot too because like when we didn't know if ezra was a boy or a girl yet we we're we didn't wait too long but when we knew we were pregnant and we didn't know and I was like, I don't know if it's a girl. Like, I want to, like, like you said, I was like, I'll have a shotgun, you know, like, yeah. I'll be that dad. But then it's like, my wife had to tell me, well, if we have a daughter, you can't get upset when like, she does go out with a boy or something. You can't be that overbearing dad. Cause then that's going to make her want to do yeah. crazier shit. That's just it. You'll push them further. Uh huh. And that was, that was another point in that book where he mentioned uh, don't have too many rules mm -hmm. for your kids. Pick a handful that are very important to you and your family Yeah, and enforce those. But if you have too many kids want to rebel, Yeah, they're going to want to break them. And alongside with that, like you want to, that's where I've been struggling. I've been thinking about it a lot. It's like, you've always heard like, don't be your kid's best friend, be their dad or be their parent, you know? And it's like, I don't know. Like, I feel like you want to be your kid's friend, like to a point, you still want to have those moments where you come down on them and like be that parent, but then you want to be their friend. Cause you don't want them to hide shit from you. Absolutely. I, I give props to my mom. Cause I could tell my mom anything. I mean, you were yeah. there. Uh -huh. We talked to her like a best friend. Oh yeah. But she had a rule with us that if you fuck up and you get in trouble and you come to me and tell me the whole truth, the first time uh -huh. I'll help you. Yeah. If you lie to me, you're on your own. Uh huh. So anytime we had, we messed up or we were in trouble with something, it's like, mom, this is what I did. Mm -hmm. And she had our back. Yeah. 
and I think that's super important. That's how my dad kind of was. Like, I look at my dad as, like, one of my best friends, you know? Yeah. Especially growing up. And, like, I was able to tell him a lot of stuff that I wouldn't tell anybody else, you know? I told your dad a lot of shit. <laughs> I, we've all told my dad a lot of shit. <laughs> especially working out with him here at a lot of, <laughs> lot of stuff. I feel like we educated him in the younger ways. Oh, yeah. He educated us on how he used to do it back in the day. And then we educated him how shit was going down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I definitely think there's a fine line to it. Yes, you want to be your kid's best friend, but you still have to be an authoritative figure. Uh-huh. You have to be that, for lack of better terms, like an alpha. Like, still be like, okay, you're going to treat people this way. If you don't, you need, like, you're going to go to your room or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't know. Still have those rules, like you said, in place. Like, the s- simple rules that, like that are not to be broken. Yeah. But... At the same time, you want to be friends and like, I feel like when they tell you something, you don't want to come down on them too hard. Like you'll still have like a punishment, like just go to your room, dude. Yeah. Cause I feel like if you come down on them too hard, you kind of close that door. Yeah. Then they're they not going to tell you to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So then they're like, okay, well, if I tell you the truth, you're just going to punish me and yell at me. Yeah, I'm not now gonna... I got to deal with your punishment and the shit I'm doing with. Yeah. So like, I feel like you still have to, I kind of talked about it last time. Like you just have to be open-minded about everything as a parent. Cause yeah. like they might be into something that you're not into. Like if Ezra ends up like in soccer, like baseball, I wasn't into those two really. It's like, you still gotta be open-minded. You yeah. can't force them down a path you want them to go down. Yeah. A hundred percent. Have you, I mean, clearly right now you guys aren't there, but have you and Drew talked about like discipline, how that looks in your house? Not really. Me and Maddie have talked about it a lot. Really? Yeah. Because she's very like anti spanking. Uh huh. And I don't think spanking should be your go-to by any means. I definitely think timeout is productive and it really depends on what kind of kid you have. Yeah. If you've got a kid that timeout sinks in as a punishment, cool. That Uh works. But if they're running out of the, out of the corner, wherever you put them in timeout, try and put them back. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I think spanking is okay when they reach an age where they understand what they did was wrong, Mm -hmm. but they chose to do it. Yeah. And it's got to be a severe thing. Yeah. Like if they, you know, touch a toy or touch something they were told not to, I don't think spanking should be the go-to. Yeah. That's how I am. I I don't really believe in spanking too much. And like something my dad would do, he'd just go... Like, he wouldn't even get mad at me. He wouldn't even, like, there's a point where he, like, I knew I was in deep shade. Just go, I'm just disappointed, dude. And, like, just leave me in, like, my own Let thoughts. That sink in. And then I would just sit there. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> and then, like, two minutes later, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then you realize you're the asshole. <laughs> and I, I feel like that hit harder than anything else. Like, he could have ever, like, yelled or anything. Because he was, like, my friend. And, like, I'd tell him, and he'd be like, I want, like, you should do this. Yeah. You know, and like maybe I'd go off and do my own thing and he'd just be like, dude, like you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like why? And then that would sink in 10 times more. I don't know. That's what I believe, like not making him feel bad or anything, just being like, dude, what, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely something me and her have covered a lot. And we've talked about like um, a big thing with parents is you want to be united. So Mm -hmm. if she asks if she can do something and I say no, um, I don't want her to argue with me in front of our daughter, Mm -hmm. whether she agrees with it or not. I spoke up first. I said, no, Mm -hmm. no is the answer. And then, you know, when we get a minute away from her, she could be like, Hey, I really don't think that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Cause once kids see like, Oh, dad always says no, dad's an ass. But mom always says yes. Mm-hmm. Kids are smart. They'll play you. Oh, yeah. They know how to play you. <laughs> yeah. I definitely play my parents as a kid. Yeah. You know, you want to go sleep over at a friend's house. It's like, I'm going to go. I'm going to wait till they're talking to their friends and then go ask them in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> Pressure them. Yeah. And then they look like an asshole if they say no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, definitely that's something we've we've covered a lot of like future things. Like if this happens, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Now, how do we want to handle discipline? What's off limits? What's not? Uh, that's something I need to think about. What's what's one thing that's like off limits? Um, so far we haven't talked about too many like serious off limits. Just because I I 
your imagination can run wild. Uh huh. Um, a big one is, you know, like we talked about earlier, the language. Uh huh. We definitely don't want her being that little kid just cussing, cussing. Like even when they're learning to talk, if they let something slip, trying to say something else, mm-hmm. don't make a big deal out of it. Just let it go. <laughs> I'll probably start laughing. I'm yeah, like, it's gonna be hard to keep it under control because uh-huh. it's like she's trying to say truck, but she's saying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go take a ride in the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So definitely the language is a big one. We want her to be, you know, respectable, Mm -hmm. have a clean mouth. Oh, yeah. And like me and Zach kind of talked about it last week with like drugs and alcohol. It's like I don't want those to be present in her life until she is a little older. You know, like, yeah, I think like we talked about like drinking kind of just around them, like not getting drunk or anything, but like builds a good healthy relationship with it so then they don't go off and get wasted and you know like pushing them away from it yeah i mean a hundred percent we've talked about uh like i mean you were there we used to get blackout drunk oh yeah bar hopping (laughs) get rowdy (laughs) but you know now i never want my daughter to see me drunk yeah i never want yeah same i she i have drinks around the house you know one two beers while we're having dinner watching a movie Mm mm-hmm and it, like you said, you want her to see, you know, you can have a drink and still be responsible, mm-hmm. but I never want to see, I don't want her to see me like sloshed no. in the house. And like, I never want just alcohol to be everywhere in the house or anything, like be in its own little place, you yeah. know, like if you have a garage um, fridge or like, I don't know, something, you know, yeah, in a man cave or whatever you got going on, but same with like drugs. I want drugs to be kind of like off limit. Like if she has questions about it, like, or if he has questions about it, I'll tell him like, you know, like this is what it does is like, you know? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think our rowdier days have some perks to it mm-hmm. because we do have firsthand experience in that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if she starts asking questions about drugs, I can tell her like, you know, this, I've done that. I've mm-hmm. done that. I've done that. They're fun. Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of consequences to it to a point, you know, (laughs) and and like, I feel like it's an experience. Like some of the stuff I've done, it's like, Oh, I'm glad I experienced that. Like now I could portray that onto my child that has questions about it, you know? Yeah. Cause like even just like smoking weed, it's like some people think that's the craziest thing on planet earth. And it's like, okay, that's pretty mild. But if someone's talking about, even crazier shit. I don't even know that stuff. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's it's funny when I get talking to my wife about drugs because she was raised LDS. Mm-hmm. And I think around 16, 17, she started to fall out of the religion. But she grew up pretty clean childhood mm-hmm. and high school experience. And when I tell her like things that we did, <laughs> it's like night and day difference. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I think it, it works for a parenting aspect because we have two very different points of views. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I've told her some stories and it's like, I definitely want to share these stories, you know, leave some parts out Yeah, with our daughter. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Just to show her like there are, drugs out there that are very dangerous you know some people especially uh, who knows what the state's going to be doing with weed if it's going to be not just recreational but just legalized in general Mm -hmm. you know i don't want her to be afraid of anything just have all the knowledge Mm -hmm. have all the knowledge going into any situation you know yeah and like that's one thing it's like there's safe ways to do stuff and like there's not safe ways to you know, obtain those such things, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. That's the hard thing. Like once, once he's 18, he's his own man, you know, whatever. Yeah. But like, I don't want anything in my house, you know, like it's hard to, but then it's hard to say like, absolutely not. And then go do it somewhere else. And not, I don't know. Like this as a parent is the hardest subject. I think there's, there's a million ways to skin a cat. Yeah. And like, cause people will tell you absolutely not. And then behind closed doors, shit's wet, like wild, you know? Yeah. I definitely think, you know, 
if you try and scare your kid out of doing things, they're going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. You tell somebody no, they're going to want to see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I think teaching your kids is the best way to go about it. Um, I, I also, I don't know. I mean, we, we've talked about, you know, I don't know if I can say this on the podcast, like underage drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Almost everybody in America has done it. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I had a, a little bit of beer with my mom at a uh -huh. young age, not extremely young, probably 15, 16. You know, I had a beer. It wasn't a big deal to me. And mm -hmm. I tried talking to my wife, like around that time, do we let her try a beer? Mm -hmm. Maybe she doesn't even like it. Yeah. But then it's in a controlled environment. My wife's like, no, I don't want her to do it. I don't want her to do it. <laughs> it's like, okay. But I also, I know what high school was like for us. And I want her to know that if she goes to a party and she has a drink, don't be afraid to call me. Yeah. I'll come get you. Mm -hmm. Don't get in a car. No, don't get in a car. And I feel like that's like goes to what we were kind of saying. Like, if you call and tell me the whole truth. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not going to get mad. Like, if you were drinking, even if you did smoked or whatever, yeah, you could call me. Dad will come get you. Yeah. And, like, get you out of any situation. No questions asked. We'll talk about it the next day. Yep. Once you wake up, everything's all good. You yeah. know? I'm not going to grill you. Your safety is my number one concern. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, when you have had those experiences. Like, it's almost narcissistic to get mad. Yeah. You know? So, it's like, okay, well, I've done this. Let's learn from this you know yeah. and move forward a hundred percent i i definitely want her to feel like there's an open door between me and her yeah that if she has any questions or she made a mistake i want her to feel comfortable to come to me yeah and i feel like that's the biggest thing because like especially in high school and like growing up or like some kids get to college and go wild because they haven't had those experiences you know yeah. and we're back again <laughs> so uh for the fucking third time Ah, we'll get it. It's all right. I need a young Jamie. We were just talking about that. I need yeah. a technical person who knows what the hell they're doing because I don't. Yeah, I definitely have no clue what's going on with all this. <laughs> it's a fun process. But what we were talking about um, was like kind of like being open with your kids, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's super important. 100%. Dude, I... I was talking to Maddie because she was asking me, when was the last time you and Emilio like really hung out? Uh -huh. I was like, I think bar hopping was like the last time. I really think it was. A couple years back. Dude, I dropped so much money at that bar because I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I had one shot and I was like, yeah, I'll cover your drinks, Emilio. You're good, <laughs> dude. I'll, I'll cover you. Just put it on my tab. And we went hard. We went hard as fuck. That was my first time going out to bars. I, was that just Brady's birthday? That was my birthday. I just turned 21. Your birthday. And Brady's is right around. It was like both of our birthdays. Yeah. So like every bar we went into, it was like we had to do a shot uh -huh. as soon as we walked in. Yeah. And that was my first time going out. And you wanted to show me the world. <laughs> and you showed me the world. <laughs> it got so rowdy. Yeah. That was pretty fun. <laughs> and like, I don't know. You showed me the ropes on like a good way to do it. So go get Apollo Burger and like eat food and take a break <laughs> yeah yeah you definitely i mean you can go out there and you could you could run a sprint through the bars and be done in an hour two hours tops oh yeah or we could really drag this out get some food at one point settle down you gotta level drag out, out and then let's go get rowdy again round two. Oh yeah and like we started out at the ramen bar you're like this is gonna be fun we'll start with some sake and some ramen and get our bellies full and then go get messed up <laughs> Dude, that sake hit different. It did. And that's like something I don't do anymore, really, is go out and drink. But I'm glad I had those those times, you know? Yeah, we – it's been a long time since I've drank like that. We – uh the big thing for us is, like, I plan a date once a month where we get my mom or whoever to watch our daughter and me and my wife go out for a night. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll have a couple drinks, but it's – I think it's important to take some time and still connect with your spouse. Yeah. Because I've heard a lot of stories where, you know, people raise their kids and when the kids move out, they feel like they got to fall in love with their spouse again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that shouldn't happen. You shouldn't fall out of love with your spouse. Yeah. And 
I was explaining it to her. I ideally you'd like to put 50% of your energy into the kid, 50% into your wife. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen. No. I, I told my wife, at best, I can give you 80 20. At <laughs> <laughs> best, you're getting 20% of me. Yeah. You know, 80% of me is going into her. Uh huh. And then that little bit of time after she goes to bed, I can give you 20% of what I have left, and then I'm checked out for the night. Mm -hmm. I saw a thing that's like, women have like so many words a day and men have so many words per day you know men have like a thousand words a day and women have like five thousand words a day they could talk and like most of the time when we get home men after working are usually done with their words they're close to like checked out their brains mentally fried yeah and like that's a real thing and i feel like you need to make it a priority like you're saying to like spend time with your wife you know like because you're you're I'm making it a priority. It sounds like you are too. Is like spending as much time with your child as you can. Yeah. But you don't want to get it lost with you and your wife. Cause that's the most important relationship to show your kid, you know? Yeah. I want her to see like, this is how a husband and wife act around the house. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we joke around, we're all having fun. I don't want her to see me like come home start getting drunk and pass out on the couch mm -hmm. instead it's you know let's all play a board game let's yeah you know let's do something as a family spend family time that's something i do is i turn my notifications off past the point like i put my phone in i have a bedtime <laughs> it yep. turns on at 8 30 and i only have certain contacts that are like come through for notifications but everything else is off until the next morning that's awesome. That's exactly what you got to do. Yeah, because like I just want my phone down. I want to spend time with my family, watch a movie, like whatever we got to do. But. Yeah. A big thing like during the work week, it's hard to find, you know, a bunch of time because by the time I get home, my wife works too. So by the time she's home, there's not a lot of time left in the day. Yeah. So it's a big thing that we all get together. Our daughter's eating solid food. So we get our dinner ready. She gets her dinner ready. Mm -hmm. We all eat together. And then we go out in the living room. We're all playing. You know, she's got this big Barbie house. We're all playing Barbies with her. Mm -hmm. And then we always do a bedtime story before we put her to bed. That's cool. Get a book. We all sit down. Me and my wife take turns. Either I'm reading that night. She's reading. We read to her every night. Dude, that's cool. That's funny because that's what we've started doing the past, like, probably the past month is every time we sit down, we read a new book. And like my wife will read or I'll read and I don't know. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It, some, sometimes it's hard to, <laughs> my reading's horrible <laughs> and like my brain's fried from the day and there's some tongue twisters <laughs> in there for me. Like I, I read it okay, but I don't have the, the emphasis to the words. Like when my wife reads it, it's like a whole production. Like oh, it's yeah. exciting when the characters are talking like, me and my daughter are hooked when she's reading it. Uh -huh. When I'm reading it, it's almost like the chat on the computer, just reading it, just real monotone. <laughs> Peter the pig jumped in mud. Yeah. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, sorry, guys, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> it's like, I'll work on this, I promise. <laughs> Once you understand what I'm saying, I'll, I'll start getting, getting going. Yeah. Dude, that's one th cool thing is we got this. Fuck. It's just like toy program. It's called like ever laugh or ever last or something. And it's uh, like they send it every three months and it's toys that help your kid develop for those three months. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. And it like, it, uh, it like kind of tells you what this toy helps with and it's like, okay, this month it gave us a book that's like, okay, like start showing your kid like hair, nose, mouth, like stuff like that. Because they're like, even though they can't talk or respond, they're listening to you and they're kind of like listening to what you're saying and they'll get that information. Yeah, we we saw a thing that like before kids can actually talk, you can actually teach them sign language for things that they want. Oh, yeah. And my wife's been trying it so hard. Like when it's time to eat, she's always telling her like milk, mm -hmm. milk. Like we're really trying to get something to stick, but. <laughs> it's hard it is hard because <laughs> half the time she's just screaming because she's hungry and it's like okay yeah we're not we don't have time for milk like we'll just give it to you here you go yeah, <laughs> yeah i feel that and it's like it's hard because it's like 
you want to explain it to them and they just look at you and it's like, I hope they're getting this because I'm trying so hard. If not, I just look like an idiot right now. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Has uh, Ezra said like mom or mama or dada? No, not yet. He's gotten close. I feel like, like we'll go like, hi. And it feels, sound, he goes, hi. Like it sounds like he's <laughs> trying to say hi. And it's the coolest freaking thing. Maddie tried so hard. Mama. Mama. <laughs> And then I spent one day with her, and I was like, "Dad, dad, dad." Now nah, that's all she says. Dad's freaking out. Dad, awesome. dad, dad, dad. <laughs> Maddie's like, "Fuck." Yeah. <laughs> but they say that's usually the first one. Uh huh. Just because I, I guess it's easier for him to say. So. Mm -hmm. But Maddie was pretty devastated. <laughs> She's like, "Oh my god, my <laughs> life is in shambles." <laughs> but that's funny as hell. Yeah. What uh? What else have you been up to? Shoot, dude. I haven't been up to much. Just working. Constant grind, you know? Absolutely. And uh, doing this, trying to get better at it. It's pretty tough. I, I was listening to people online when they were doing this kind of stuff and then telling me, like, like not telling me, but saying, like, oh, yeah, like, it's hard to get into. I'm like, bullshit. You got to sit down and talk. I mean, it's tougher than you think. Yeah, it it's definitely a little nerve-wracking doing it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big, <laughs> you know... Like my wife kept saying, it's just a conversation. Uh -huh. It's just, yeah, but it's going on the internet. <laughs> yeah. It's There's like, I don't know what I can say. say that don't belong on the internet. Uh huh. Like when you sent me a text and you're like, what can I say? I don't want to get you canceled. I'm like, oh shit. What is he going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I was a little nervous about it. Like, what are the rules to this world? Uh huh. Especially like knowing you, like we've grown up together. I'm like, I know we've talked about some shit that could get us canceled. <laughs> Yeah, I, but, I definitely say a lot off camera. <laughs> it uh -huh. should not be on the internet. Mm -hmm. I do too. And like the goal with this podcast is to be as like transparent, I feel like, as I can be. And maybe once I get like monetized, fingers crossed, hopefully, that's the goal for this year, I won't be able to say as much. Yeah. Then I'll have an OF for uh, raw podcasts. That's, uh, there's a podcast I listen to and they do through Patreon. Uh huh. I know a lot of people do it through Patreon. And then they say like Only the fans. paywall. Uh-huh. Once you have that paywall, you really don't need to worry about it. Mm-hmm. And like maybe that's what I'll do eventually if like I get cracked down on YouTube. <laughs> I can't <laughs> swear or something. Yeah. We'll have an hour long podcast here and then an hour there that's a little more crazy. Yeah, I think it was Theo Vaughn that was dealing with sponsors saying uh -huh. they'll pull the money. Yeah. And like that's something that's crazy is like sponsors would go at him like that yeah did you see it the one peloton? with dana white <laughs> yeah and he <laughs> called the gym and told him throw all the pelotons out uh -huh, and he's made it very public and shit yeah which i think is the coolest thing i do too like i kind of see the culture of the internet coming back around because like even youtube was like super cancel culture and super strict and it's starting to loosen it's like restrictions and stuff a lot Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, people are starting to fight back. You're talking freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, with the Internet, you're putting your product on another company's yeah. domain. Mm -hmm. And they it's kind of like, do have a say, but mm -hmm. you start restricting too much, people freak out. And, like, that's where I feel like, like conversations like this are huge. You know, like, to be able to just to talk and say whatever, you know? Yeah. Talking about your car sales and car max and... <laughs> Oh, your wild shit. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I got some more stories we'll do off air. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Follow me on TikTok. We might throw one up. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, maybe over there. <laughs> but, um, like, I don't know. I feel like people want more of the, like, raw conversations, you know? Yeah. Because, like, when it gets too restricted, it's like, okay, what am I really getting out of this? You know? They're not being real. Like, people are so fake on the internet and it's like they're then you hear stories of about them and they're totally different it's like i don't want that for me yeah i'm just doing this for fun yeah like that's my whole goal is just to have fun with it have i didn't know much going into it as a dad and so like i want to have these conversations you know like i didn't know the four month sleep regression was a thing yeah stuff like that you know yeah that that definitely happens <laughs> so this is just something fun to do and like I don't know. Well, and it gets you thinking. I mean, like bringing up different points like you and you're talking about discipline. Mm -hmm. 
you know, how does that look in the house? It, you hear other people's points of views and it's like, oh, I never really thought about that. Mm -hmm. Like I just went to a, a buddy's baby shower and he had like this paper and they were asking questions of like, what is this? What is that? You know, what, what bone or what are babies born with without and they develop later? And one of the questions was, what's in the hospital bag? Mm -hmm. He was like, what's a hospital bag? <laughs> yes. It's like, dude, <laughs> you know, some guys just need a little bit of information. They're kind of going into it blind. Yeah. Like they're excited, but they don't know everything that comes with it. Yeah. So I pulled him aside and like, bring your own ibuprofen. Yeah. They charge you per pill there. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's expensive. Yeah. Bring every product that Preparation H makes for hemorrhoids. Yep. And that's something that I didn't know even. And like, I didn't have a hospital bag really for me. I just packed like clothes and like stupid shit, you know? And it's like, I had to go to a Walgreens and I bought ibuprofen for me for headaches and like bring some Red Bulls with you or like, yeah, if you have that caffeine kick, cause I was getting a crazy headache and it's like, I don't know, like guys don't even think of stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I started to get cooped up in there. Oh, yeah. Like, I had to go out and get food. How long was, were you guys in there? We were in there for, like, three days. Three days. We we were in there for about a week because when our daughter was born, she wasn't breathing on her own, mm -hmm. and then she swallowed a bunch of uh, ambiotic fluid. Oh, that was my worst nightmare, dude. Yeah. So, like, right as she came out, they laid her on my wife's chest. And they come out blue, for those of you who don't know. Yeah, don't get they, scared. They yeah. come out deformed and their heads looking weird and Yeah, blue. they started, like, patting my daughter, trying to get her to start breathing. She wasn't pinking up. And the nurses are like, we got to get oxygen. Mm -hmm. So they take her, they lay her on the table, they start pumping oxygen in her. My wife's freaking out because, you know, they just took the baby. It, uh -huh. it wasn't what she was expecting. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, we got to rush her over it was during covid was still a big thing so they had to rush her into another room because they wanted to x-ray my daughter and see how much fluid was in her lungs yeah well that was the first dad decision i had to make my wife was getting stitched up from just delivering mm -hmm. so she's laying there there's a lot of blood they're about to take my daughter out of the room who am i picking mm -hmm. like i'd been a dad for about five minutes uh-huh and now i've got to pick one or the other <laughs> yeah and I grabbed my wife's phone and I said, here's your phone. I'll text you. I got to go with her. Uh huh. So I followed my daughter trying to send my wife texts like, Hey, everything's okay. Updates and everything. Yeah. But we were in there for a while cause they started pumping her lungs. She started breathing on her own and we were like, okay, we might get out of here. And then they were like, she has jaundice. We got to keep her a little longer. We had, yep. <laughs> yep. It was like, dude, I, I didn't know jaundice was a thing. Yeah. Ezra got a little jaundice and, uh, he wasn't to the point where they had, he had to go under the UV lights, but he was a, at a level that we had to keep going in every day and check his levels. Yeah. I felt so bad because he had to keep getting pricked in pricked. the foot Yeah, and taking his blood. But um, that's one thing I didn't know. I was like, I didn't know a baby could turn yellow. And then, then I hear jaundice and that he turns yellow. I'm like, how serious is this? When it's really not super serious, but... Yeah, my daughter was under the lights, but it was hard because she had to stay in that room monitored for her breathing for I think almost two days. And then they finally were like, she's doing okay. They brought her in. We got her for a couple hours and they're like, she has jaundice. We got to take her back, put her under the light. So we spent a lot of time just sitting in the room, me and her like, mm -hmm. we could go in there every now and again and see her. But it's like hard that you just had your baby and now you're sitting in this hospital room just hoping she's okay. Without her? Yeah. I couldn't do that, dude. And like, then the first night they brought her in, my wife was so exhausted. She just wanted to sleep. My daughter wasn't sleeping. So I sat up with her in the hospital all night, just excited I could finally hold her. Uh-huh. And we watched Wonder Woman. <laughs> One, the first and the second all night. <laughs> that is awesome. Just because I was like, I'm not letting go of her. Yeah. That's literally how I was, dude. Because... Uh... Every time they had to take him back to the little room and do the checkups and stuff, I was like, I'm going with, like, I'm not letting him out of my sight kind of yeah. thing. I've heard, like, I heard horror stories of, like, nurses mixing up kids and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, nope, I'm keeping my eye on him. And, like, that scared the shit out of me. And they had, like, little, I didn't know this, they have, like, little tags they put on their arms and legs. and You had to do, like, Dwight Schrute and 
bring a Sharpie and mark them. Uh huh. <laughs> or like Andy and Woody's like write something on the bottom of his yeah. foot, you know? <laughs> but dude, one thing that kind of was crazy to me. And like one of the reasons that I did this podcast is like, we're going into the, um, God, what's it called? The little ho- hospital for babies. The, like the delivery. No, no. The pediatrician. Oh. Sorry. So the like next day after we got out, it was over a holiday weekend. So nobody in Twilla was taking anybody. So we had to go all the way to Salt Lake and that's where we go now. He's like, you don't want my business? All right. <laughs> but, um, we go in there and this dad's going up to get his baby and he has his car pulled out front. And I was like, Oh, like congrats. He's like, thanks. I'm like, are you excited? And he's like, not really. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> he's like, I'm scared, but not really excited. I'm like, Okay, dude, good luck. <laughs> like, see you, bro. Wow. Yeah, I was like, well, I feel bad for your wife and your child, bro. Yeah. And then it's like, it's okay not to, like, know what you're doing, but not to be excited. I was like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely, like, leading up to it, I was very nervous. Like, our whole life's about to change entirely. Uh-huh. But I was also really excited. Yeah. Like, I was excited to meet her. Uh-huh. Excited to become a dad. Oh, yeah. That's how I was. And just to hear that, I was like, what? <laughs> You're not excited at all, dude? I know. I'm like, okay, bro. I'd say the hardest part right now is taking her into the pediatrician for the shots. Oh, it breaks my heart every time. You're, like, she's just chilling, having a great day. You know, you take her in there and they're like, okay, here we go. And they stick her and she's just losing it. Uh huh. And it's and, like, dude, I'm sorry. And like with Ezra, they stick him and then like he's like, and then gets all red and then starts crying, like builds up to it. I'm like, fuck, you're having the best day like yeah. of the week and everything. Yeah. It those are hard. Yeah. But like like you said, like for the new dads, like pack a hospital bag. And like I bought this diaper bag for me because I don't want to just have like a backpack or like the girly bags, you know? It's called like tactical baby dad. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I, got, I have their backpack. Yep. I have their backpack and their baby carrier. Yep. I have their black baby carrier. I'm yep. like, I'm not looking like one of these like stupid little baby carriers. This one's cool. <laughs> yeah. I have the patches on the backpack. Uh huh. The baby carrier. I love it, dude. It's like I've put on with the first baby carrier we had, it was supposed to be like unisex. Mm-hmm. So it could have fit both of us. I put that on I'm like, dude, this does not feel comfy at all. This does not fit me. It's yeah. Not- so Maddie got me that tactical baby gear, baby carrier. And as soon as I put that on, I'm like, okay, this uh-huh. feels good. Dude. And it seems like it's simpler than the other ones on the market. Cause like you just have one little clip you could clip in and then you're in it. Yeah. And then you just unclip the two and yeah, then the, the baby two. goes right in and then you just drop your little kangaroo pouch and <laughs> put the baby in and click it back into place. And it seems way more easier than like what true has. Yeah. And, and the backpacks killer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love, I love how we got the bigger one. I think they had two sizes when I was looking at it, we got the big one, the changing mat in the back. Yep. That's the one I got. <laughs> it's like has the changing mat. And then I got like the, diaper wipe yep. attachable thing so you put some baby wipes in this pouch and then you can open it up and well and it's cool because like all of that comes off and you could buy another they call them mods i think mm-hmm. you can buy a whole nother set of pouches as they get older and you don't need all the little formula spots the whole oh, thing shit. velcros off and you velcro on the next mod i didn't know that yeah i need to check that out see i'm, I'm learning shit too <laughs> like but like that thing's cool because it's just a black bag you know yeah and like, I don't know. That's probably the one thing like we've really splurged on. As yeah, those, far as those like, are fucking expensive. Yeah, yeah. Their stuff <laughs> their strollers crazy nice, but I can't <laughs> justify the like five, six hundred dollars they want for a stroller. Uh-huh. It's like, oh like, nah, I can't spend that on a stroller. Uh-huh. <laughs> like you don't want to be cheap and you don't cheap out on a stroller, but you don't want to spend a grand on a stroller. No. No, but like the bags and the baby care, like especially the baby care. I'm like, the baby's going to be in it. It holds the baby like it's super important. I want it to be nice and comfortable. Well, and I think it dispersed the baby's weight better than like the one my wife has. Mm -hmm. Because the one she has, I feel it a lot on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. But that tactical baby gear, it definitely spreads it across your back. Yeah, I agree. So if you're going for a long haul of, you know, two, three hours or all day going to stores and you're 
putting her in that baby carrier. It's it's not bad at all. Yeah, and it's pretty comfy, and it's got a little pouch up front. You put stuff in and a little zipper. Yeah. So I even put, like, a little drink pouch on it. I put my drink in the backpack and call it a day. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I think stuff like that is super important as a new dad to, like, have. Well, and I think it's a good way for dads to, like, embrace it. Yeah. Instead of, like, you know, a feminine baby carrier you've got something where it's like i'm proud to be a dad yeah this is my bag this is my diaper bag yeah because like my wife has her baby gear Uh uh-huh i got my baby gear Mm -hmm. and it's like okay well i'm taking my baby gear today and you're proud to wear it and proud to you know throw the baby in the baby carrier and everything absolutely you know one thing we were talking about though is like going out in public i never felt this way until we had her but now i see these uh these people that come up like people talk to your baby or they're like oh look how cute Uh uh-huh dude i think everybody's a pedophile (laughs) i know bro (laughs) like get the fuck away yeah there's like just this nice older guy that's just like hi just waving at my daughter and it's like dude you're a creep get out of (laughs) here and he could be like a grandfather a great grandfather of 16 Mm -hmm. but it's like i don't like you waving at my daughter it's that protective instinct yeah it's like okay get your one high out and then (laughs) keep it moving gramps Like one little hi, and then if they wave, whatever, that's cute. It's like, okay, see you, dude. Yeah. On your way. My baby. <laughs> Another thing we do is uh, when people ask our daughter's name, we give a fake name. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It just makes me feel comfortable that they don't know her real name. Yeah. Like, people just weird me out. Yeah, people weird Maybe that's too. over the top, but. Yeah. I can't really hide it. I got his name, like, tattooed yeah. right on my arm. Yeah. But. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's his name. Don't wear it out. <laughs> yeah, I give a fake name for them. Same with me. Like if I order food and they're like, what's a name? I always give a fake name. I've started doing that and it's fun. <laughs> it's- Do you have a go-to alias? Bob. Bob? Bob. Mine's Barry. Barry? Barry McCockiner. <laughs> Barry Mc- <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Have you ever had someone like call the full name? No, I've never, I've never really dropped the last name. I ought to start dropping it. I always just give Barry. It's just, bit, what's your name? McCockner? Yeah. <laughs> just, I couldn't say it. First time I did it, I was like, Bob. And I was like, started laughing. I was like, I can't do it, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's second nature now when I order food. It's, yeah, Barry. Dude, it always changes sometimes too. Like I worked with this one dude that would do it. When we'd go get lunch, he'd always change his name. Just, I don't know why. I was like, huh. And I started doing it. I'm like, I like, like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> like I went through a phase where I'd read their name tag and then just say their name. What's your name? Tom. Oh, wait, yeah, my name's Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Same <laughs> spelling too, dude. Just throw it in there. Yeah. <laughs> Give me an extra nugget, dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Barry's my go-to alias. Barry. Yeah. Bob's mine. I'm like, Bob. Or Frank. You know, Frank. Frank Gallagher. <laughs> 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 we have a cat that comes around a neighborhood cat and i call it frank, frank. just because he's he comes around he wants some food and then he's gone and you don't see him for two three weeks and he comes back around and <laughs> damn that's like frank gallagher dude <laughs> we have names for all of our chickens i don't know how you could tell them apart you just uh, make you it up can. yeah they've all got like we've got different breeds um you can tell little different colorations but coming up with that many names that's that's challenging tough. How did you come up with um, your child's name? So it's my middle name, and then her middle name is my wife's middle name. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so it just flows. That's awesome. I didn't – damn. Hell yeah. (laughs) Wait, that was a big battle trying to pick names. It's a battle for sure. It goes back and forth like throughout the months too. Well, and then we'd like (laughs) – so – I got a new calendar for this year and I, I take the old one, just copy like people's birthdays and you could see, we would write down like appointments for the baby as we were going through the pregnancy and just all the different name changes. <laughs> We'd settle on one. And then for some reason it's like, no, I don't like that. Uh huh. No, I don't like that. I think that's what you got to do too. You go to appointments. <laughs> like how's appointment for Tom today? Yeah. No, I'm not feeling Tom. Yeah. You know? And I, I'm convinced like if we have a second, it's going to be another girl. So like when we start thinking of baby names, we're not even going to waste time on a boy name. Yeah. So if the universe throws a curveball at us, we're going to be scrambling. Well, with all your aliases, dude, you might have a name on the go, like ready to go. 
Barry McCockner. Barry. <laughs> That'll be his middle name. <laughs> Teacher will call on him in class. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's... Being a dad's been fun, though. Are you going to... Are you going to, like, have, like, tea parties and stuff? Yeah, so a big thing that we want to do is take her to the Grand America. Uh-huh. They do, a, like, a princess tea time. Oh, that's type cool. deal where everyone gets in their dresses. and. Oh, yeah. My wife really wants to take her. I'll probably take her there for one of our daddy-daughter dates. Um, my wife's putting together, like, Galentine's type thing. Mm-hmm. Girls are all going to get together. That's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> I'd I feel like you need that, you know? I got no shame sitting down having some tea with her. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't either, <laughs> you know? You, I think you need to do that as a dad. Yeah. I I really thought, like, when I heard, like, oh, you're going to be a girl dad, everyone's like, what about all the pink and the Barbies? It's like, dude, I, I lay on the floor and play Barbies with her now, and mm-hmm. I'm singing the Barbie songs that the little house sings. Oh, yeah. and You need to do that. Like, it, I feel like you're... I feel like you're less of a man if you can't do that with your own kid. Yeah, I'm I'm really getting into it. Oh yeah. And like I feel like that just shows your commitment to him too. Yeah. I that was a big thing for me too. Like when we found out we were pregnant was um I told her I told my wife like I'm not missing a single appointment. Even if they're just measuring your belly. Mm-hmm. I was there for every single appointment because yeah. I I told her you know from now on now that we have a kid coming she comes before work before anything else yeah and i feel like that's how it is for me too like when there's an appointment it's like hey i'm taking off of work for this yep you know i'll be there yep and i've talked about it it's like i'm gonna be that involved dad that it probably will annoy him to a point when he's older <laughs> yeah. but like i'm gonna be there yeah and like maybe when he's older he'll look back and be like hell yeah like my dad was always there for me you know yeah well she may be embarrassed that i show up to you know her functions in my hoochie daddy shorts and- oh yeah Fanny pack may be coming. Oh, I want a fanny pack. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I see Joe Rogan having that leather fanny pack around. I'm like, I need that motherfucker. <laughs> I put my gun in there. I, you yeah, know, dude. I fanny put my packs phone in there, you know. <laughs> I was running the cell phone holster. And my wife's like, I got to shut this down. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you are not 70 years old, dude. <laughs> I told her like I've got gray hair already. Like let me let me rock the holster. You're like let me rock it. Don't yeah. don't shame me out of my freaking holster, okay? <laughs> I don't know. I see people rocking it. I you know, I feel like I need to rock the jorts and the fanny pack and if someone has a problem they just come say it to my face. Yeah, if there's one thing I can recommend New Balance. I need to find some New Balance. Just balances. go try them on. Especially since they've gotten more popular, I feel like their designs look a little better. Yeah, these ones are pretty clean. But they're they're mad comfortable. Yeah. I need to get some for sure. Like usually when I get tennis shoes, you have like that break in period where they feel kind of stiff. Uh huh. This felt like somebody broke it in for me. <laughs> and personally handed you some yeah. nice broken in shoes that are still clean. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing over there, but mad yeah. props to New Balance. They're doing it right. Yeah. I need to get me some for sure. Is there I, a specific like one you'd recommend? I don't know what these are, but like this specific type but these are pretty comfy i need to check them out because i usually just rock nikes and vans vans have been my go-to lately you know because i've been working out it's good to have a flat shoe but for me i've got my work boots and then new balances for when i'm trying to look somewhat cleaned up Mm -hmm. other than that you'll catch me in crocs crocs i've got american flag crocs and then i've got camo fuzzy crocs for the winter there you go you put those bitches in four wheel drive yeah, and lock the, the hubs and <laughs> get those insulated Crocs crawling. That is, awesome. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Yeah, I love my Crocs. Yeah. What else? Uh, what's one more product you recommend as a dad, as a newer dad? Uh, my top product, honestly, and I, I don't know the brand offhand. We have a diaper garbage can in her room, and I know some people are like, just take the diaper out to the garbage outside Uh uh-huh dude that thing locks the scent in yep and it's so easy to switch the bag because it's got a little cutter built into the lid oh wow so you pull the bag down when it's full cut it right there tie it and then tie a knot on the bag that's already in there you can get about 10 changes Uh uh-huh 10 bags are already put in there and it's just a quick swap it locks it in 
and it's got a hatch in there and i feel like there's nothing more satisfying than when you change a dirty diaper and you slam dunk that thing into the garbage can. oh yeah and it's like hell yeah and then you pull that little <laughs> lid shut yeah that's what we have is like i don't know what brand it is but it's a diaper pail just like that and i just put hefty bags into it and like that's just as easy you know like you just hefty bag it has a little like round thing put the lid down and it's good to go yeah and i i think it's super convenient yeah so i that's a good that's a good one i didn't even think of that yeah there's a couple products like especially now that she's getting she loves bath time yeah we got this little whale it's got a little pump in it and it lights up oh that's cool set it in there and it just sprays water out the top she loves that thing that's freaking cool i'll need to check that out yeah because he's enjoying bath time a lot more now too yeah, I'll I'll send you a bunch of the bath toys we have because it went from, like she enjoyed it, but now it's she gets upset when you take her out of the bath and it's like, chick, the water is cold. I gotta get you out of here. <laughs> we gotta get you dry and in some jammies real yeah. quick. Because <laughs> she could spend you know an hour in the bath. Yeah. Well, I'll have to check that out. You'll have to send that to me. Yeah. But that diaper pill, for any new dads out there, surprise your wife. It helps a lot. Yeah, diaper. And then it's easy too. for them too. Just put it right next to the changing table. Yep. Diaper pill is a big one. But, hell yeah. I think that's what we're, where we will end today. But um, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks Checking for having out. me. We'll have to have you more. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. And It'll be fun to come back. That's one thing I wanted to do real quick. It's like, I haven't seen you in forever. Like, I know we're new dads. Even if you weren't a dad, it's like, I just want to sit down and like, have, some, have my friends come over and talk, you know? Yeah. Let's reconnect a little bit. Yeah, so. this was good to catch up. Yeah, it was good. I've to got have. more stories when we're done with this. <laughs> Until <laughs> I want to hear them. So, <laughs> yeah, it's about to get real wild. <laughs> real wild. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe but, you'll catch it on a TikTok. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> we might be wild and throw it up there. <laughs> but um, I'm going to start putting my episodes on Spotify. So you don't have to be on YouTube. Nice. But if you want the video version, check it out on YouTube. Um, follow the TikTok. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But um, let me know down in the comments if you want to hear anything. If you want us to try a specific kind of beer or something with the guests or whatever, any suggestions. So let us know. But catch the uh, catch you next week. Just remember, two things we don't fuck with: rattlesnakes and condoms. <laughs> and that's why we're parents. <laughs> but thank you guys.